Hello, everybody. Although my pose may in some small way resemble that wonder of the ancient world, the Colossus of Rhodes, actually, I'm Lowell Thomas, standing in front of what will soon be one of the wonders of the modern world. Over the years, it has been my good fortune and pleasure to report to you from the seven continents and the seven seas. South America, Africa, spectacular Alaska, exotic Tibet. And now, if I can be heard over the roar of all this machinery of preparation, I'd like to give you a preview of the wonder of the modern world. Here on this very site is to be erected, they're doing it at the moment, the symbol of the theme of the New York World's Fair, the Unisphere, being built by United States Steel. Robert Moses, president of the fair, has guided its destiny from the beginning. How will this fair differ from other world's fairs? Oh, it's bigger. There's more to see, more ground to cover, uh, better exhibits, more of them. It's on a, a huge scale. In uh, measured by acreage, uh, numbers of exhibits, any other, by any other norm or, or measure, it's on a much bigger scale. 650 acres and over 200 exhibitors. Here is being built the biggest, most fascinating show ever created by man. Already there is being built a fantasy of color and shapes that promise one of the most exciting events of our time. Under construction is the Port of New York, New Jersey exhibit building. When completed, there will be a heliport on the roof, the air gateway to the fair, beneath a restaurant, and thrilling movies in the round. The General Motors Futurama building with a dramatic ride of the future that will accommodate 70,000 visitors daily. Ford will feature a unique automobile trip through Fantasyland, especially created by Walt Disney. A permanent hall of science to be built by the city of New York. Life-size prehistoric animals are under construction for Sinclair's Dino Land to dramatize the wonderful story of petroleum. Greyhound, a post-house restaurant of the future. The Mobile Pavilion. Test your driving skill in a simulated mobile economy run. And in the Transportation and Travel Pavilion, you'll take a simulated moon trip. Transportation exhibits at the New York World's Fair. I'm sitting here in the World's Fair Amphitheater, where you'll enjoy a spectacular stage and water show conceived by the producer of stage shows at the Radio City Music Hall, Leon Leonidoff, in association with Meyer Davis, famous orchestra leader. This is the Lake Amusement Area, where showmen from all over the world will present the finest in entertainment. A wax museum, famous paintings and historical events brought to life in wax. The AMF monorail, an automatic air-conditioned ride around the Lake Amusement Area. The dancing water, beautiful music set to a changing pattern of multicolored fountains. You'll see the Santa Maria anchored in Meadow Lake, an exact replica of Columbus' flagship. Taste delicious Chinese specialties in the Chunking Rickshaw Inn. John Ringling North's Continental Style Circus. The Music Hall, presenting a century of American musical comedy. 
Nearby, the Jones Beach Marine Theater will offer Guy Lombardo's exciting musical, Around the World in 80 Days. And when night falls, a lovely fountain show with music, fireworks, and a vivid kaleidoscope of color. The crack of a baseball bat. The cry, Homer. From 55,000 voices here in the William A. Shea Stadium next to the World's Fair. This will be the home of the New York Mets beginning 1964. Here, too, will be played the all-star baseball game with stars like Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle. New York City and the Fair will also be host to the 1964 Olympic Trials. At the Fair's arena, seen here or in the pavilion, you'll see fencing, judo, gymnastics, and wrestling, and the Danish gym team to be seen at the Fair's sports program. The girls are a study in lovely precision. At the time of the 1939 World's Fair, I reported from this exact spot. In fact, did my broadcast here. In the days when nylon, plastics, and television were the sensation. But today, the industrial giants of the world are preparing a mighty new spectacle here. Here where steel is taking on the shape of things to come. IBM's People Wall will transport you upward to a theater and film spectacular designed by Charles Eames. General Electric's Progress Land includes Walt Disney's amazing animated figures and an actual demonstration of atomic fusion. The Kodak Pavilion will present photography as a truly universal language. In the Bell System exhibit, you'll ride through a series of theaters dramatizing the past and future of communication. Traveler's insurance, umbrella of protection, and man's triumph over the hazards of life. Electric power and lights, tower of light, the brightest beam ever created. Uncle Ben will star in the brightest show on earth. At RCA, you will peer behind the scenes of an ultra-modern, full-color television broadcast. The Gas Industries Festival of Gas will feature the latest in gas appliances and a unique gourmet restaurant. Coca-Cola's World of Refreshment will house a melodious electronic carillon. Johnson's Wax, a jewel of a building, with a suspended theater within its circular colonnade. At Scott Paper, you'll relax in a beautifully landscaped park, an elegant interior rest area. For Micah's Hilltop House, showcasing the newest products of the American Cyanamid Corporation. The F&M Schaefer Brewing Company, a buffet and the largest beer bar in the world. National Cash Register Company will demonstrate tomorrow's world of automation. 7-Up presents authentic international sandwiches and entertainment. You'll relive the turn of the century at Rheingold's gay little old New York. DuPont will have two theaters and an exhibit area where fairgoers will see better things for better living through chemistry. Westinghouse will bury a new time capsule documenting man's exciting progress over the last 25 years.
the Pavilion of American Interiors, the newest and best in furnishings for your home. To the Boy Scout exhibit will come 40,000 Scouts during National Jamboree Week alone. Pepsi-Cola presents Walt Disney's It's a Small World, a tribute to UNICEF. The attractive exhibit building of the Simmons Beauty Rest Center. The House of Good Taste exhibit, a three-home showcase designed by the country's leading architects. The Better Living Pavilion will cover major areas in everyday life. The exciting new world of industry at the New York World's Fair. As some of you know, I have spent much of my life roaming this planet in search of the unusual, the interesting, the exotic. But you, right here in the international area, can visit more than 45 countries and see much of their best in peaceful competition. Shop in Hong Kong for handmade rugs, jade, and carved ivory. Step into Switzerland's restaurant and then treat the family to the Swiss sky ride. See Balinese dancers in Indonesia. In the three-story Mexican pavilion, native art and handicrafts. Pakistan will emphasize her historical past, present, and future. The Austrian pavilion will be made of gleaming wood in an A-shape, symbolizing Austria's glorious mountains and forests. Sweden will emphasize her creativity in arts and products. The Republic of China special exhibits in a traditional motif. The exhibit building of Sierra Leone will symbolize its famous mountains. India's theme, Progress in Democracy, will be dramatized by relics of the past and aspirations to the future. The Hall of Free Enterprise, presenting a total concept of economic life in a free community. Japan's participation is extensive. One exhibit by its government, another by industry. Ireland's exhibit will unfold that country's rich literary heritage. The Caribbean Pavilion, limbo dancers and the rhythms of calypso singers and a steel band. And at the International Plaza, many other nations and foreign organizations will be represented. Nations from around the globe pledge to a theme of common understanding at the New York World's Fair. The central theme of the fair, peace through understanding, will gain in depth and perspective through impressive religious and cultural exhibits and events. For the first time in the history of World's Fairs, there will be exhibits presented by many major faiths. At the Protestant Center, all Protestant groups will exhibit together. Towering over the Mormon Pavilion will be a replica of the towers of the Salt Lake City Temple. Within the Christian Science Pavilion will be exhibits from 40 or more countries. The Billy Graham Pavilion will house a 600-seat theater with films shown every half hour. The death of Pope John XXIII shocked and saddened the world. In the words of Robert Moses, I believe John XXIII will cast a shadow like that of Peter, the rock on which this church is founded, and in civil affairs of Abraham Lincoln, who also had the common touch and spoke for all of mankind. The decision of the Vatican to take part in the World's Fair set a new precedent. Pope John XXIII approved a loan for the duration of the fair of Michelangelo's masterpiece, the Pieta, his famed sculpture of Mary holding the crucified Christ.
In Rome, Pope John activated a radio signal transmitted overseas to the fairgrounds that started a pile driver breaking ground for the Vatican Pavilion. Not only the Pieta, but other rare art masterpieces from the Vatican will be on view, along with sacred objects and documents telling the story of the Christian faith. Three former presidents are proud to serve as chairman for the fair. Herbert Hoover, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Harry S. Truman. And here on this four and a half acre site is rising the magnificent federal building. Its theme, challenge to greatness. Here will be exhibit halls, a theater, paintings and sculpture, and tributes to our American heritage. President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, visits the fair to break ground for the federal pavilion. The president greets Mr. Moses and his staff, and then the group moves to the pavilion site. We have roamed these United States and literally combed the globe for pavilions and exhibits which will reflect the achievements of all men in industry, culture, and the arts and harmless entertainment. We confidently expect more than 70 million visitors to an unforgettable pageant. Then the president. I want the people of the world to visit this fair and all the various uh, exhibits of our American industrial companies and the foreign companies who are most welcome and to come to the American exhibit, the exhibit of the United States and see what we've accomplished through a system of freedom and many of our states will exhibit. New York State will feature the Tent of Tomorrow and a circular theater with panoramic motion pictures. In the New York City building, there will be several exhibits. Here's a part of a giant model now under construction of the entire New York metropolitan area. 840,000 buildings in astonishing detail. Here's New York's lovely summer festival queen, getting a close-up view. Dick Button's ice travaganza with Olympic skating champions will also be in the city building. On the shore of Meadow Lake, Hawaii will feature food specialties at the Five Volcanoes restaurant. Florida will have the first live porpoise show at any fair and a hundred foot high citrus tower. Missouri's Lindbergh was the first in air, her Alan Shepard first in space. New Jersey will celebrate its 300th anniversary. The New England states, a village green and country store. West Virginia proudly exhibits as the land of relaxation. And Maryland will dramatize the Battle of Fort McHenry and the writing of the Star-Spangled Banner. Our own United States of America at the New York World's Fair. A fair is news, often big news. This is our press building from where we tell the world about new exhibits, visiting celebrities, ticket sales. The building dedication was attended by hundreds of newsmen, radio and television reporters, publicists. Principal speaker was Pierre Salinger, White House Press Secretary. And I think that this will be more than just a center for the press of New York or the press of the United States. This is gonna become a world press center in 1964 and 65. You're going to have people coming from all over the world who are playing the major role in shaping the opinions of the people in their country. Then a ribbon cutting, a typewriter ribbon. News was made at the fair when General Douglas MacArthur paid a visit. In the model room, the general saw the exhibits in miniature. The fair will revive our lagging patriotic spirit, the general said. It was a most pleasant visit from a grand old soldier.
New housing facilities are being built throughout the metropolitan area. By opening day, 350 hotels and motels with pleasant accommodations will be ready for you in all price ranges. Some, like this one, right off the fairgrounds. Others in New York itself are familiar and comfortable. Still others are brand new with the gloss and sheen of modernity. Some motels are right in town, and parking is no problem. And staying in New York is fun. From the tallest building, a view that is unsurpassed. A delightful lunch. And a cooling spring breeze. Curtain time along the Great White Way. Even buying tickets to the fair. Tickets are on sale now all over the country. Many city institutions will sponsor joint programs with the fair. The Guggenheim Museum, the New York Public Library, the Museum of Modern Art, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and at the magnificent Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts, the New York State Theater to open in time for the fair, and Philharmonic Hall. Concerts, plays, Opera and ballet at the Great Lincoln Center. Getting to the fair from the city is easy. Take a subway, bus, railroad, pleasure boat, or even your own boat to the World's Fair Marina. Over 800 craft will be able to dock here for a visit to the fair. Or you can even take a helicopter from three New York heliports, one on the roof of the Pan American building. Helicopters will make regular flights to the fair. They'll land at the Port of New York, New Jersey exhibit building. World's fairs, as a rule, are ephemeral. Will there be anything lasting at this one? Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, in the first place, we'll have the, uh, uh, several new buildings, but over and above that, we're going to finish Flushing Meadow Park with the receipts of the fair. And uh, when I say that, I think it'll be the finest park in the city of New York. It's right at the geographical and population center, and I think it will cost about $10 million to finish the park. Uh, the landscaping will be here, the trees will still be here. Uh, about half the utilities have been put in on a permanent basis, so they'll stay. And uh, this will be a great park, the park. But in the meantime, construction goes on so rapidly, in fact, that what you see here is already ancient history. It won't be long now. A final chapter. President Kennedy in Washington speaks by telephone to a World's Fair Board of Directors meeting presided over by the Executive Committee and starts the final countdown. By dialing 1964, I launch the final phase of this great effort. And so plans and preparations race ahead for the opening of the gates to the New York World's Fair. And you'll be one of the 70 million, perhaps 80 million visitors to see this, one of the most spectacular shows of all time. And now, until April 22nd, 1964, so long.